Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome back to a brand new camp build and today we are on the public test server taking a look at the upcoming camp shelters feature that will be coming to the game this winter and it's showing quite a bit of promise I think so let's jump into the vault utility room and tackle our first shelters build Okay then, so First things first, let's have a little look at where we are on the map so you can uh, see if you'd like to build in this location. But while we do that, a little disclaimer as per, we are on the public test server, this is unreleased content, so there will be a few issues that we'll be talking about, and if you want to avoid seeing anything before it's released, then this would be a good opportunity to back out now. So, spoiler warning in place, let's have a look at this build, shall we? So, first things first, this is the smallest of the three rooms, this is the vault utility room. And uh, the major issue with this particular set of spaces that we have at the moment, obviously, is they're kind of semi-finished vaults. So building in them is a little odd. If you build a house inside an existing structure, things are always going to look a bit weird. So I have mixed feelings on that. I'm looking forward to some of the other alternatives that will be coming on down the line. But uh, this is the smallest of the spaces. This is the one that is free. So uh, we're going to start here, seem like a sensible place, and see what we can do. So we see there's still some issues. As I mentioned in my previous videos, you actually can't build around the outside edge here. That sort of black surface is very awkward to build on. You can kind of put some furniture on it, but that's about it. Whereas this blue area is a snappable surface. Not that you have to snap, as we'll be seeing in a bit. But uh, also because we're on the test server at the moment, some things are unlocked that I don't currently have, and some other things are locked away and not available that uh, I would normally rely on to build with. So it's a bit of a challenge at the moment. Obviously things will be changing. It's uh, just the first phase of the test build, so obviously things will develop. But, for now, we're in the back corner, we're going to get this farmable tile in. It's uh, having a bit of an issue snapping around, putting it at the edge of this blue area, that's just the snappable area, it makes it tend to jump around a bit and snap outside, which is kind of annoying. Hopefully Bethesda will get that fixed. But, um, without being able to build outside of this blue area, or at least not in terms of floors and walls and things very easily, it does mean that things don't quite fit between the walls, which is definitely a bugbear of mine. I'm not sure what Bethesda had in mind with doing that, but it's definitely an annoyance. However, we'll make do and come up with something that does kind of work. So, currently we can't actually place crops in here. I suspect this is going to change. But uh, they have, for some reason, unlocked the greenhouse pieces, so we'll put them to use while we can. So still waiting to get those in the uh, armor ace season at the moment. But they're here, so we're going to use them. We'll build ourselves a little greenhouse inside here. As I say, there's some speculation at the moment that... Um, crops may not be permitted in the final version of shelters but I don't think they'll do that to be honest um, it's just that you can put an awfully large number in here and then just uh, use it for a money maker is fine but you can basically do that in camps as it is anyway if you really want to this the amount of crops you can squeeze in if you're determined to do so is pretty high so I can't see that being a reason for Bethesda not doing it so I think it's probably just a test server thing but as I say for the moment we don't have any crops so we're going to improvise with some potted plants instead. <laughs> Not quite ideal, but you'll get the idea from it, so that's the main thing. Drop a few of these in. And move along. I'm cutting out quite a lot of fiddling around on this one, I should say, because uh, it's all decoration heavy, this. And obviously with it being an internal space. So keeping things moving along is kind of necessary. <laughs> so... What I want to do here is use these conduits to basically create a kind of sprinkler system. So we've got to water a plant somehow. So the idea is that the um, pipes are pipes, I suppose. Um, and the little round sections in the center of the junctions and the emitters, the uh, round emitters that we'll see in a moment, those are basically going to be the sprinkler heads. So you can kind of lay these out in any pattern you like. What I've gone for here is to have two pipes along the ceiling running from the back to the front, one either end. And then more running across the center so creating a bit of a tidy pattern you don't want to put too much in there it's kind of over the top not that build budget is too much of an issue in here it has been dramatically increased inside these shelters so that's very very cool so we'll get a few more of these junctions in see i'm gonna have to uh, take some stuff out change some things around while i'm figuring out what i'm doing we'll jump onto the end in just a moment and you can see what i was going for and a little bit more clarity so this wants to snap in See, having these four piece junctions, I suppose, on the outside doesn't really make a right lot of sense, so I'm going to change that in just a moment. There we go, figured it out now. So 
we'll go for these single ones when I can find them in the menu. There we go. Uh, that makes it look like there's a sprinkler head on the end. So we'll swap these out. And as I say, we'll have plenty running, plenty of pipes running across, but only two running along the length of it. You'll see, in, you'll see what I mean in a moment. Get our sprinkler heads in. The idea is to line up these circular circular pieces, these sort of sprinkler heads, over the top of where the plants are. So, a little bit of chopping and changing needed to get that to work just the way I want it to. But we are improvising a bit here, so kind of works. It's something I did back in Fallout 4 once a long old time ago, which was quite cool. It's nice to be able to bring this back and do some of those cool old techniques again in 76. So pull these junctions out that I don't need and swap them out for just the straight ones. I don't want one running back to front there. Another one in there. And this is where the pipe's going to be down the middle, so these are basically not going to be sprinklers, as you'll see in a moment. Find that particular piece I want. There we go. Sprinkle our heads on the end. And then we just need a few a pipe running down the middle. So I want a cross one here because we're going to have another vertical one in that back edge. There we go. So we'll get this vertical one in and then we'll have a, a slow pan so you can see what's going on here. As I say, you can customise this to your own taste and your own build as well if you want to, but it's a fun little way of creating a kind of sprinkler system anyway. There we go. So things are lined up reasonably well. Not too many pipes, just makes just enough to make the right amount of sense, I think. Unfortunately, not much we can do at the bottom, but uh, hopefully the plants will hide that reasonably well. So, a little bit of lighting in here. Give it a splash of colour, make it look a bit more interesting. Just going to use these cycling lights. Unfortunately, we have to directly wire these, which is kind of annoying, and I can't wire them to the conduits either, which is also very annoying. But uh, it is what it is. A lot of the restrictions are lifted inside the shelters, which is very, very cool. But uh, not all of them, by any means. So we've got a slight issue with things not wanting to move small distances as well. So in a moment, we'll have to drop some generators on the inside of this room, because although we can use the conduits to run power from the outside through the wall, we still can't connect the lights up, so it doesn't really help much. Get this light in in just a second. Want to figure out where I want it to go. There we go. I actually use these later on in their white setting as well in one of the spaces in the kitchen we're going to do in a bit. Basically because I was able to put a light in that was the right colour, put enough light out, but wasn't as bright as the default one. So they're quite handy for that. But again, you do have to wire them up, so that is the small drawback. So we'll get this generator dropped in. As I said, some of the restrictions have been lifted in shelters, and that's quite handy. It allows you to place things in places you wouldn't otherwise be able to. You can literally put things floating if you like, which is not what I've done here. It's not entirely suitable for this build, but one drawback to it is occasionally it makes things a little more finicky about being put in exactly the right place. You appear to be able to place things even more than usual in, in places where they're not actually going to work. So, as we can see here, that conduit, uh, yes, that conduit, if they're a tiny little, too, tiny little bit too high, Struggling with that there. <laughs> there we go. Got it figured out now almost. There we go. Drop it down a bit. As you see, it wants to sink into the wall as well, which is kind of a problem. Hopefully, a little fine tuning will be done over the course of the uh, shelters features time on the test server. I'm sure it will. That is the general idea. So, little crafting area up next, and we're going to drop a generator in here. A few people on the forums and in comments and the like have said they're not very happy about the fact that there's clearly power in here. Obviously the in-situ lights that are on the walls there are powered. Unfortunately we can't delete them either, which is actually what annoys me more. But um, we, anything we build has to have its own generators as per the usual camp system, which I know bothers some people, but it doesn't really bother me too much. Um, people don't like the wires trailing all over their camps and I can understand that, I feel the same way, but they're easy enough to tuck more or less out of the way, as we'll see in a bit. So, I say I'm not too bothered, but uh, it is a bit nonsensical at the same time. I would much rather be able to delete the existing lights so that we can have a bit more control over our lighting scheme. Not too much of an issue in the vault utility room here, but the other rooms are much more brightly lit, so it kind of limits your control a little bit. Right, we'll get a few of these workbenches in. I'm going to chop and change the positions a bit. So getting things to line up and look neat and tidy and stuff needs a little bit of trial and error. 
Not a massive fan of this blue floor, to be honest, and uh, from what I understand, I'm not alone in that either. It's kind of ugly, if I'm honest. Um, you can, as we can see, put floor pieces down, but it's kind of awkward to do. They tend to snap outside the floor area, or they don't quite fit between the walls with the current setup. So hopefully with a bit of fine tuning on the test server, that will become a bit easier. And better yet, hopefully, Bethesda will give us the option to change the texture material, the surface of that blue floor, so it looks a bit more interesting, possibly with some of the ones that are in available via the Atomic Shop, so that would be very, very cool. But uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully uh, a few suggestions will go but this is way and they'll act on those. Get a few bits of decoration dropped in here. This place looks a little bit more functional and lived in. And as I said before, a lot of the options I would normally use to decorate with I haven't got available because of the, the limited scope on the test server, which is a little unfortunate for now, but we're going to have to make do with what we've got. I think we managed to pull something off reasonably well, I think. We always need a little bit more clutter and clutter options, really, in terms of decoration. It's just something 76 has been crying out for for a long time, so hopefully we'll get some of that with this shelters feature or on down the line, because this is the perfect place for it. So, fingers crossed with her, so we'll go down that road. There we go. I've moved that uh, brewing station on the end because for some weird reason it didn't want to look like it was lined up properly. Even when it was, it was a very, very strange thing. But uh, putting it on the end kind of hides the stuff behind it from this end. So it actually looks much neater. But, onto the kitchen. So again, very limited resources for kitchens. Definitely an area I'm looking forward to having more clutter for. Hopefully we'll get that on down the line. But for now, I'm going to squeeze everything in where we can. I've slightly forgotten to put my pit boy light on here, because it is rather dingy in this space. So uh, just lifted the brightness a little bit for you, which has done nothing for the quality of the textures, unfortunately. <laughs> but... Uh, at least you guys can see what I'm doing a bit more clearly. One of the things we don't currently have on the test server is sinks, so we're going to have to go back to the old standby of using a chemistry station, but it works. Added bonus while this is on the test server is that uh, they've removed the material cost for building items in shelters, which is great, so I basically go to town without having to worry about farming wood and steel and the like. Sadly and unsurprisingly, won't be the case when it comes live, but uh, very practical for the moment. Get this lined up, so we've got a bit of a work surface here. Clearly somebody's been doing some butchering on the top of that. Just nudge this cooking station in so it lines up a bit more neatly. There we go. Getting this particular cabinet to sit very closely to that cooking station was a bit of a nightmare. Um, until I actually moved it this time, and it was a bit more cooperative this time. But those pipes at the back do make that cooking station a bit more awkward to position sometimes. So. I do wish that we were, the collision would basically ignore those, so you could stick them into walls and like a bit more and have it look a bit neater, but what can we do? Either way, the kitchen is basically done, just a little bit of decoration needed now. We'll move on to our lounge area. One of the other things that I'm not blown away by, though I kind of understand as well, is the water splashes on the floor there, the little puddles. Um, I kind of see why they've gone for that, the abandoned vault vibe, but at the same time it's kind of annoying, because they function more like light and they do like objects so if you put a rug on the top of it the water's just on top of the rug instead of uh, being covered up which is slightly annoying i wouldn't mind seeing that those removed don't mind the sparking thing on the wall too much but the puddles i would like to see come out but for now we're going for the closest thing i can create to a home cinema vibe which is the big tv on top of a tv stand there but nice sofa set up gonna drop the uh, what is that thing stove I suppose but uh, stretching the definition off into the corner Get a few more bits of furniture in by the time I did the tour I actually put a little oil lamp on the back of the stove there's kind of a little lip on it that you can just about stand the oil lamp on that makes it look like there's light coming from inside it which is quite cool unfortunately can't glitch things into each other it would seem but at least in this build but there's to have uh, removed the ability to use the flamethrower glitch which is unfortunate but not hugely surprising either so I suspect that is living on borrowed time now. But a little bit more furniture in, starting to get the thing coming to life. Those antler chandeliers I don't actually have available on my character. It's just something that they've unlocked in the test server. My guess would be that they're particularly resource intensive objects. So what they're doing this weekend is more focused on stress testing the, the initial rooms. So it would make sense to have some of the most highly demanding objects unlocked for everybody. So I'm guessing that's what's happened there. It does make me want to unlock them even more, which I'll have to keep an eye out for them in the Atomic Shop. 
So, on to the bathroom, which I very nearly forgot, actually. But uh, the one problem with this space is we don't have the chemical toilets, the porta cabins available on the test server at the moment. We do have some extra bits and pieces for bathrooms. Not many, but some. So, this really does need to be enclosed. Otherwise, having it out and open just would look very, very strange. So, what I'm trying to do here is back the walls onto each other. Much the same way we do when we're snapping doorways together to put double-sided walls for wallpapering. Though, unfortunately, we don't actually have any wallpaper at the moment. But uh, I'm sticking with these brick ones because the white surface in there just looks a little more vault-like, I guess. It's more in keeping with the existing concrete surfaces of the walls. So double-siding them allows it to look more like it belongs in here rather than using wood or the warehouse pieces or barn pieces, something like that, that would look really out of place. But... In the bottom of the build menu, you can see an option to toggle the snapping on and off, which is very, very handy in here. And I was just placing things just about wherever you like, which is what I'm doing here, so that we can sort of freehand these in, get them nice and close together. The doorways still allow us to place them more closely than regular walls would, even though I'm not snapping them in. So, there we go. Got those backed onto each other, and turn them back into walls now. And we have a nice little enclosed area for our bathroom. The new addition that will be coming with this, a clean toilet. Awesome. It may even be coming sooner, but we'll see. We'll have to keep an eye on the Atomic Shop. So I have no doubt it'll be in there. Although it might be in a future season, actually, so that would make sense. But that just means we now need a clean bath, as we have a clean sink already from the last season as well. So hopefully we'll get one of those in time as well. And some shower options would be great, because for right now, we're going to improvise. <laughs> Same thing we did with the sprinklers in the greenhouse there. I'm going to use conduits to kind of Evoke the look of a shower. Not quite mean to put that in the bath, but shift this out of the way and get that positioned, and then we'll put the bath on top of it. But uh, obviously the shower head's going to be a little bit too high here, but you get the general idea. Kind of gives that vibe a little bit. Sadly can't put a shower curtain in, but what can we do? It is the post-apocalypse after all. Things like shower curtains we'll have to live without. So we'll get a door snapped on there. And there we go. Let's put a little bedroom in this space over here. One very useful feature I should mention as well. Doors in shelters don't actually have to be snapped into door frames. Most of the time, obviously, you want to do that. It doesn't make a right lot of sense to have them floating randomly. But one of the problems with the regular camp system is that if you put doors in before you've finished your build, they kind of get in the way because you can't just open them from within the build menu. Um, and if you just select them and move through, they still remain solid, which is slightly annoying. But with the changes to the system inside shelters, you can literally pick it up, dump it any old place so it's out of the way, and then just put it back when you're done, which is quite handy. It's a little, little detail, but it does add a, a little bit to the quality of life. Definitely makes life a bit easier. So I'm very happy about that. I mean, minor detail that only really comes up if you do a lot of camp building, but it's pretty cool. So, a little bit of furniture on the side there, desks and some chest of drawers, and get a bed dropped in here. On reflection, I should have put this round on so it backed onto the wall to the left there, but uh, yeah, this is what we go with, and it kind of works. So, get some bedside cabinets in here. There we go, there's one. And the other. You can't quite tell from this angle, but you'll see in a second, this doesn't quite line up with the rug, the bed in particular. So we're going to do a handy little trick to just make things match up a bit more evenly and then drop them back in. Let's look at that out of place. There you go, see that's really off-center. So we'll just pull this whole thing back away from the wall a minute, so I've got a bit more space to work with. Now I can basically position everything on the rug and then sort of rug glitch it back in. I'm not trying to push it into any other objects or anything, but moving everything as a single unit when I've lined everything up on the rug is much, much easier. Yeah, it's about right. Some weird reason the bed looks bent. <laughs> I think it's more the rug actually, but I'll drop that back in. There we go, being tidy. So, a few more bits of furniture in, and we've got one last thing that I really want to do in this room, which is put something in this big open space in the middle. So we're going to use the massive dining table that I've never had the occasion to use yet. As, uh, it's usually a bit too big for my builds, so I tend to build a little on the smaller side and then decorate a lot, which is kind of what I'm doing here. Although I haven't got much control over the size of the space. But we'll get this lined up from the door so it looks sort of straight and central. 
and uh, drop the massive table in. Get some chairs around it. One of the things I was thinking about doing initially before I settled on this build was trying out a Free State style build. I basically put all of the um, brick walls in so that it looked like the inside of Free State's bunker, but I wasn't really happy with the results. The ceilings didn't look right. It was a bit limiting. And when you pass through the doors, you still see down the sides of the building. So as a result of not being able to place any walls on that black surface. You could sort of freehand it, but it didn't really look great. So I settled on this instead. So here we're going to get the atrium and lobby doors in. So you can actually place doors, these ones specifically, inside your shelter that will allow you to move between the different instances. If you've got more than one, you are limited to three instances per camp. But it does mean you don't have to go all the way back out into Appalachia and then deal with the longer loading time that comes with that. You'll see much more to load in on that. You can just pass straight from one shelter room to another with a, a much, much shorter loading time, which is really cool. But the loading time for shelters is pretty good, really. I'm pleased to see that. But we'll get these lined up. As I say, placing things outside the edge here is a little temperamental, but hopefully that'll get improved. But for now, these seem to work okay. There we go. And with this room, I wasn't really sure what to do. It's the space you actually uh, load into every time you come in. Which is... Means it needs some kind of entrance decoration. So we're going to work on a little bit of a guard post and a little bit of extra... Well, junk, I suppose. Just to make it look a little more lived in. If you've seen Final Render's video, it's worth checking out. Um, he did mention one interesting thing that apparently has been quite big on the forums. Or, shouted about a lot of the forums is people creating death traps in these spaces so in the interim if somebody's got a, a camp shelter in I would not go in there unless you absolutely trust the person who owns it because there are a few people just placing pressure pads down exactly where you spawn in an absolute ton of traps and then basically making a kill room that is more or less unavoidable for the players very very annoying and very very prone to griefing so I imagine Beth Bethesda will sort that just as fast as they possibly can but for now, I would avoid going into the shelter of anybody you don't know and trust. Just a, a little pro tip there. So, we're going to get a couple of turret emplacements just behind these little concrete barricades. I did want to use a sort of free barricade prefab, but it just doesn't look quite right. It doesn't, it doesn't match up to 90 degrees, it's a little bit more than that, so it looks a little odd. Works outside okay, but not really in this space, so... Improvise a little bit. It's a little more ramshackle, but it works. Get some turrets on some tables here, so they can see over the top. And we'll nudge them back into place, add a little bit more decoration. Another thing that is probably well worth noting about these shelters is the PvP rules do apply in here. People can attack you, so make sure you've got a mode on, because otherwise they can also destroy your furniture as well, which is very easy to repair, but it's worth knowing about. Whether or not Bethesda will make these non-PVP zones in time, I don't know. But um, for now, if you don't want people coming in and smashing up your vault, then basically you need to make sure you've got pacifist mode on. You can actually lock the doors as well, so that should help keep people out. But uh, if they're willing to take the wanted bounty on their heads, then they can still pick their way in. So worth bearing in mind. But a couple of little desks to make a uh, guard post look like they were once occupied. A little bit more decoration in here, get a couple of boxes in. Make it look a little bit more lived in. And I don't currently have terminals, at least the ones that will go on desks anyway, so we're going to improvise with a couple of TVs. So, we'll drop those on the top. This one was a little awkward, actually, because it's so close to the turret. I had to wait for the turret to turn around to an angle where it would allow me to place it and just time it right. They're just a little too close together there, but... We managed. There we go. So, at this point, I'm going to go away and add a bit more junk and a bit more clutter, and we'll take a look around at the finished product. Okay, so we're going to start outside briefly, so you can have a little look at what I've done out here. If you want to look at my previous videos, I'll make sure they're linked up on cards in the top uh, right corner for you. So you can have a little look around in the other spaces and get a little idea of what the whole deal is. But, you can see, this is one of my favourite locations, so not much going on here. The entrance to the vault utility room is actually quite easy to conceal, which is cool. So that's kind of what I've gone with, just for the fun. 
Didn't really want to build a full camp out here, but as we peek around the corner of these bushes, you can see we have a little farm tucked in here, because for some weird reason, for, uh, hunger and thirst seem to be going up a lot faster on the test server at the moment, so that's slightly annoying. But, with my character fed and watered, there's a little hatch. <laughs> so we'll head on inside and have a little look around. So I've added a bit of wall decor, added a few extra bits and pieces just to give it a bit more of a complete look. A bit more junk around here. That little blue box in the corner you can sort of see hiding behind all the stuff on the left there. It's actually kind of like your camp unit. You can use it to repair everything. You can also use it to scrap everything if you want to, which is quite handy if you want to start a game. One thing I like about having the decontamination arch where it is, is it kind of blocks the view through the door a little bit. Kind of gives a curtain or door feel to it. I think we are going to get doors that will snap into these spaces, but we don't currently have them, so... I have seen them in the camp, build, uh, camp menu up top, though, so that's quite cool. So, something to look forward to, but yeah, nice little entrance, a little bit of decoration around. And, yeah, nice little homely vaults here, or homely bunker, really. It's less vault-like, more bunker-like, I think. Couldn't squeeze a lot of decoration into the bathroom here, we got a little bit. Obviously, the options are a little limited on the test server, as I say. Nice. Lots of colour, lots of warm light, nice homely vibe. I'm quite pleased with this. Apart from the puddles. <laughs> bits of pieces around the bed there. The only plushie that's available at the moment, for some weird reason, seems to be the Wendigo Colossus. So, I had to make do with that and repeat him a few times. I've got a few bits and pieces from the Atomic Shop that I don't have as well, so... While I've got access to them, there is our stand-in greenhouse here. Gone for red lights because it's better for the plants, although the atmosphere doesn't look quite as cool. Might have preferred green, but that wouldn't work. <laughs> so we'll push on down into the crafting area. Really like the little points of light around this as well. Quite creates a nice little atmosphere without being overly bright. You can still see what's going on. I swapped out the power armor station as well for the other design as it just looks a little better in this space. Put a couple of rugs down as well because the floor needed breaking up a little bit down here. Just a little bit too plain and uniform. And plenty of sash boxes and that. Sash boxes, even, and the like. <laughs> There's our little kitchen. Again, as I said before, decoration options are a bit limited for kitchens at the moment. But I'll squeeze a few bits and pieces in there just to give it a more finished look. And the lounge area, I think this has come out as being my favourite space. I really like the lighting in here. It's kind of warm and cosy and a nice place to hang out. Which is why this is the shot you'll see on the social media. And probably the thumbnail as well. But, uh, yeah, quite happy with how that looks. So, yeah, camp shelters definitely need a little bit of work. The space is perhaps the best blank slate of the lot, despite being the smallest one. It's also the free space, so that's very, very cool as well. But, uh Looking forward to some of the subsequent places that are coming up, like caves and the like, because that'll give us a lot more freedom to do more or less whatever we want with, which is cool. All in all, yeah, not too bad for uh, a first effort and first version of the test build of Camp Shelters. But for now, I also thank you very much for watching, and do hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do hit those buttons for me, it's very, very much appreciated. Social media links, merch store, and channel memberships are all available down below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel in that way. It's hugely, hugely appreciated. And if you get the chance, do join us for one of the live streams as well. We're having a lot of fun playing both Fallout and a little bit of Horizon Zero Dawn as well. For now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.